See that? That's what we're going to do today, like it or not. <laughs> we're just going to praise God. Because that last song that we sang, all my life you've been so faithful. All my life you've been so, so good. Can you attest to that? I can look back on my life and just see that even when I was in what I call my stupid years, God was guiding me. God was protecting me. Where would I be right now without God? Who knows? I'd either be dead or in jail or something like that. Uh, I just praise God. I just praise God. So we're going to be in Psalm chapter 145, verses 1 to 7. I originally wanted to use this whole chapter, but as I was studying, I got to chapter to verse 7, and I was like, man, i got to stop right there because I could just make this a two-hour sermon. Would that be okay if I did that? No? <laughs> Okay, so salvation changes a person. When we are genuinely converted, um, regenerated, or born again, genuinely, there is a change that happens. If you're truly saved, you cannot remain the same as you were before you got saved. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All things become new when you are saved. Our new relationship with God just energizes us, gives us a whole new outlook on life. When you're saved, you uh, just look at things differently. Uh, I know, I know, I did when I was uh, before I was saved. I just yeah, let the world do what they want to do. Everything's okay, you know. All roads lead to God, that kind of thing. But we see things differently. We see life with a new set of eyes. The Holy Spirit comes in and gives us gives us a fresh new way to look at things. We love to pray. We love to read the Bible. We love to gather together with our brothers and sisters in Christ and, and uh, worship and praise and study the Bible. We uh, even gain a new perspective on um, circumstances at work uh, and our family and all of our relationships. We just see them differently. We want to serve others as well as serve the Lord. And we see that serving others is, in a way, serving the Lord. Because when we serve others, others can see Jesus in us. That's how we witness. That's one way that we witness is by loving others and treating others as they should be treated, as God would, as Jesus would. Um, we understand that we're now in the family of God. We are now in the family of God. You should see yourself as a child of the king. We are children of God. I heard one amen. We are children of God. All right, that's better. We're children of God. And just that should give us opportunity, should give us reason to praise Him, to give God praise and glory. When we praise God, this is another reason to praise God. When we praise God, when we honor God, when we read the Bible, when we pray, Satan hates that. And I don't know about you, but that right there gives me a reason to smile. Because the one that causes all the pain and heartache in this life hates it when we praise God. So let's praise God. Because we hate him. We hate him. I hate what he's done in my life. So, let's read scripture. Let's stand for the reading of God's word. This is a song of majesty and love. It's a praise of David. Verse 1. I will extol you, my God, O King. I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. 
That means that with our finite minds, we can't understand exactly how great God is. We just can't fathom that. Verse 4, one generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. Verse 5, I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wor wondrous works. Men shall speak of the, mighty, of the might of your awesome acts, and I will declare your greatness. They shall utter the memory of your great goodness and shall sing of your righteousness. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are the Almighty God. There is none other. And we love you, Lord. We love, want to serve you. And we just want to praise you today and give you glory for who you are, for what you've done in our lives, for the wondrous, wondrous, amazing works that you do, for your wonderful creation. And I could go on and on. And I just thank you, Lord. And I just want to praise you. And I pray that you give me the joy and the enthusiasm and the love and the passion to deliver this message as you would have me to. And I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, verse 1 to 3. Um, I already read that. He says, I will extol you, my God, O King. To extol, that's not a word that we use every day in 2023, means to praise, to lift high, to exalt. David honored and promoted the name of God in the most personal ways. In personal ways. Look at it again. He did it with a direct address. He said, I will extol you. He was speaking directly to God. He did it with a personal reference. I will extol you, my God. And then he says, I will extol you, my God, O King. He says, O King. That means he was doing it with submissiveness and uh, a surrendered heart completely to God. And how does he do it? Forever and ever. Forever and ever. David is firmly resolved to praise God. Look at how many times he says, I will. I have the New King James Version, and I see it five times in these seven verses. I will extol you. Um, every day I will bless you. I will praise your name. Down in verse 5, I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty. In verse 6, I will declare your greatness. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. David, is, in this, is piling praise upon praise upon praise. Greatly to be praised. It declares God's greatness and his worthiness to be praised. I have a habit of saying, that's awesome. Things are awesome. This is awesome. That pizza was awesome. You know, things like that. This is awesome. But you know what? The word awe, A-W-E, should be reserved just for God. Because he is the only one that we should be in awe of. That pizza didn't compare. <laughs> He's awe. He is awesome. He is the awesome one, the almighty God. We get the feeling that David felt it would be dishonorable to withhold praise to God or give him half-hearted praise. You hear that? Give him half-hearted praise or withhold praise from him. Think about that. Do we do that? Do we give him half-hearted praise? Verse 2 says, look at verse 2. I will praise God every Sunday for an hour. Is that what it says? It says every day. Every day we are to praise God. Everything that we do should praise God. Before we do something, we should say, how does this honor God? Does this honor God? Is what I'm about to say honoring to God? Is this a way to let people see Jesus in me? Praising the Lord is who we are. Praising the Lord is what we do. We're to praise God continuously. If you don't make a habit, listen to this. Are you listening? If you don't make a habit of praising God now, in this life, you're not going to like heaven. Heaven's going to be nothing but praise all the time. We're going to be praising God. 
And I think sometimes that people aren't going to want to go to heaven because there's nothing to complain about there. <laughs> sometimes people just complain and complain. You talk to them, they don't do anything but complain. You just want to say, just shut up. <laughs> Praise God. God is so good to all of us. We need to be praising God. We're to praise Him continuously. And how often do we come to church and sit there thinking, well, I got better things to do. You let your mind wander. How often do we actually come into this place, this place knowing that this, especially the sanctuary, is God's house? We are to be respectful and honoring in God's house. This is God's house. We should, I've said this before, we should hit those doors with our heart prepared, our soul prepared, mentally, physically, spiritually prepared to worship God. Because that's why we come here and have this in your hand. That's why I never had the scripture up on the on the board, on the screen, because we should have this with us when we walk in this door. This is the reason we come here. Bring your Bible when you come to church. I hate to be yelling at people, but when you come to church, you should have your Bible in your hand. You should be here. Be at that in your there. So, anyway, off my soapbox. Um, so David says in verse 3, Greatly is God to be praised. God is greatly to be praised. This gives the idea that David felt it would be honorable, dishonorable, to withhold praise to God, or even give him a half-hearted praise. I've already said that. Um, not only on Sunday morning, but at all times. On Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, all days of the week, we're to be praising God. Look at verses 4 to 7. Verse 4. It says, one generation shall praise your works to another. David looked for God's people to encourage each other in their praise. Do you do that? Do you encourage each other and just praise God? We should be speaking in praise and, and, and glory to God. We should encourage each other to give praise to God. And we need to understand how vitally important it is to teach our kids to praise God. When we fail to do that, they will learn to take everything for granted. And that's what we're seeing in our society today. Kids are given things. And they, I think it's just so, such a, I don't know the word I'm looking for. Um, it touches my heart when a kid says please or thank you. And you don't hear that very often anymore. It's usually you give a kid something, they take it and just, you know, that's the end of it, end of story. Say please and thank you. When I was a kid, that was manners. You did that. They learned to take things for granted. Rather than giving them everything they want, they need to learn to be thankful for what they have. And they learn that. They learn to be thankful by working for what they have. And the other day, I, I was thinking about this. I, I passed by a, uh, a field. I think it was down by Dick's. And there was uh, bales of hay. And when I was a kid, I was 12, 13, 14 years old, the neighboring farmers would call me and a bunch of my friends to help them haul hay. How many of you did that when you were kids? Working in the hay. That's a great way to build character, to get a work ethic, and to earn things. I would bust my rear end in that hot hay field all day and earn $25 maybe, I think. I forget how much they paid an hour, but I really appreciated that. That was my twenty-five dollars. The first I remember the first car I bought, and it was a uh, I forget what year it was. It was like a '67 uh, Bonneville or something like it was. It was a tank. It was gigantic. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a big piece of junk. But man, that was my car. I bought it with my money. And I appreciated it. I loved that car. It was it was huge. A gas guzzler. Back when the gas was 50 cents a gallon or something like that. So anyway, <laughs> I'm getting off the subject. I'm chasing rabbits, right? Um, <laughs> so, but you learn to be thankful when you work for things and earn it. And Paul, uh, David says, 
I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty and your wondrous works. So praise comes not only from emotion, but from careful thought, careful meditation. David meditated not only on the great things God did for him, but his wondrous works, his creation. Most of you know, I've said this before, that uh, I am a lover of nature. I love, you know, the flowers, the sky, the, the night sky, all the stars and everything. I love that. And I love one of my favorite things is to just sit and listen to the wind, listen to the birds. And this afternoon, you're going to get an opportunity to listen to the rain. And I urge you to do that this afternoon. Just go out on your porch or open a window or something. Just listen to the rain. It's so peaceful. And God is in it. God is in it. Just thank God for nature. And we've been watching a video on Wednesday nights called God of Wonder. Uh, we just finished it this past Wednesday. But it, I have that, actually. I don't think I have it here. But um, if you want to watch it, let me know, and I'll, let, I'll be glad to let you use it. It's an awesome thing for kids to watch. I think it would be wonderful for kids to watch. But it, it just explains how everything works together. Everything had to be created. It couldn't have evolved. Even the way, the thing that got me is the way the feathers on a bird's wing, they're made specifically, they're grown in a, in a certain way, and they fit together kind of like a, the way the guy explained it was like a Velcro. They fit right together perfectly. How could that evolve? That could not have evolved. God's creation is awesome. His planning uh, the way he planned everything, the way it all works together, the oxygen, the distance of the earth from the moon and the sun, it's just perfect. If it was any further away from the sun, we'd freeze. If it was any closer, we'd burn up. It's just perfect, perfect for us. And God did that. He is the God of wonder. Now look down at verse 10. It says, all thy works shall praise thee. Nature itself praises God. Nature Praises God, the rain, the wind, the stars in the sky. That's what we should do. And right now, I want us to do that, to praise God. We all, everyone in here, has a, has a reason to praise God, to give witness to God. So I want you to just stand up where you are and tell God, Thank you. Praise him for something. Thank him for something. Give a witness something. Just praise God. Let's do that right now. Somebody stand up and give a praise to God. Can't stand. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, that's fine. I do praise God that he gave me four beautiful children and they were all healthy and well. So I do praise God for And I'm hoping to praising God for my knees. <laughs> Your knees? <laughs> yeah. Uh, he gives me more strength in them. Okay. Uh, yeah, we thank God for...